You are looking at a film of the Sonic Wind LSRV Land Speed Record Car Automobile model. Now you can see below it, sitting on the tank for the uh, uh, the fuel, the methanol, and uh, behind it is another methanol tank. If we scan back, you'll see the entire vehicle is here. The vehicle is about 40% complete. I've been working on it diligently, mostly alone. There you see the pedo tube, the nose cone, the mocked up wheels and wood here, the electronics control box, some bulkheads made up mocked up in cardboard. Now the white uh, strips of cloth are here to simulate the body lines. So you can see how the body lines follow the uh, model very closely. This is a 24 inch diameter titanium sphere from the satellite. Behind it is the uh, methanol tank. There's two of them here and they are from a uh, redstone uh, ICBM. Below them you can see these round long cylindrical tanks that run the length of the chassis. This is also methanol containment and it's a ladder like setup. You can, if you look closely here you can see some of the cross rails here just about ready to be put in place. And uh, what happens is the idea we're, we, we're trying to, to uh, to set up here is to basically use the um, the methanol tanks as a rigid structure to help the chassis be even stronger. Now here behind the methanol tank you'll see a, a cylindrical section of metal. This is margin steel and it essentially is the uh, blast capsule that we'll be having the dry roll sit in and the blast capsule uh, will be wrapped in ballistic fiberglass and be much stronger than it is now. Of course it's very strong right now but uh, the, the driver will be totally separated from the vehicle because it is a rocket and rockets do contain a lot of fuel and there's always an explosive hazard so we want to eliminate the driver from the car uh, separate the driver from the car rather and uh, and protect them as much as possible. Behind the driver section here is a 41 inch diameter titanium sphere from the Apollo service module. Uh, it will carry helium and the helium will pressurize the tank behind it which is the liquid oxygen for the engine feed. So the engine oxidizer. In the nose, of course, let's look back this way. There's the blast capsule. Ahead of it are the two methanol tanks, and below them are the long methanol ladder-like tanks. Ahead of that is a 24-inch diameter sphere, and that will have nitrogen in it to pressurize the methanol. Now as we swing back, here's some of the cross ladder sections here standing next to the the chassis. The chassis itself is two by six quarter inch wall mild steel and then everything else nestles and is stressed against the uh, chassis with bulkheads. You can kind of get an idea of the vehicle's lines here by by tracing those those white strips of uh, cloth. Now let me just uh, scan past the liquid oxygen tank here. Behind the liquid oxygen tank is a 28 inch diameter sphere that is also titanium and it will carry nitrogen for the fuel also. So you've got 28 inch diameter titanium sphere, the 24 inch diameter titanium sphere in the nose. They'll pressurize the fuel and the 41 inch diameter titanium sphere uh, in the midsection, their dead center of the photograph now, the film right now is uh, for pressurizing the liquid oxygen into the engine. The engine itself is a modified XLR99 which came out of, originally came out of the X-15 rocket plane. Now the uh, Now you can look up the back of the engine here and you can see the uh, the exhaust nozzle but what we're going to do is we're going we're just taking the injector section of the engine which is the heart of it it's kind of like the uh, carburetor and intake manifold of an automobile engine and uh, we're going to build our own combustion chamber and nozzle and I'll be showing you more of those in the future uh, as, as those become more available to us above them above here above the engine here you can see these are the parachute uh, tubes and they'll be pressurized to blow the chutes out. The chutes will be exact duplicates uh, of each other. There'll be two of them. Essentially they're going to be a supersonic ring slot parachute and uh, they originally were used for a uh, nuclear delivery system and uh, we're basically using them for a land speed car. They come out about 5 feet in diameter and they open all the way up to about 17 feet in diameter. They can come out at Mach 2 so we're really happy with these chutes. Here mounted one of the fins is mounted on the chassis came off an atomic, an army uh, atomic delivery missile which uh, uh, was designed for Mach 2 speeds at low altitude. 
uh, kind of as we look along the length of the vehicle here, you can see how close we are to building this land speed car. Sonic Wendell SRV will be the premier land speed car and the most powerful car I've ever seen on the planet. There'll, there'll be nothing that can touch it in speed, uh, nothing being built in Australia or Great Britain or planned by any nation uh, will be able to touch this car in its velocity. And its stability will be second to none. So um, I'm really optimistic about what's happening here. I'm walking you back again along the length of the vehicle so you can get an idea what it looks like. There's the model on top of the uh, methanol tank. See the nose starts to droop quite a bit here. Goes down to the nose cone. And we're going to fan back here one more time. Give you an idea what this vehicle looks like. I hope this clarifies uh, a lot of what I'm attempting to do. Thank you very much for your time.